Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome tonight, beloved, with us. We are tonight with the Johnson family. And we give God the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank the Lord for His goodness, His mercy, and His grace. Tonight we're going to sit around the Word. Last night I spoke about false prophets and true prophets. Tonight I want to speak on the trademark of prophets. What is their trademark, true prophets? Um, the reason I speak upon the trademark of prophets, um, false prophets, it's easy to identify. One of the main reasons is when they prophesy, they will lead you away from God. And a lot of things they will say will contradict the word of God. And sometimes, you know, when somebody, just because he speak the truth, doesn't mean the spirit that he operate from is the spirit of God. So tonight we're going to sit around the word, we're going to discuss and we're going to speak about the subject of the trademarks of the true prophetic voice. Now the Bible tells me in the book of Amos, for some people the Old Testament is not relevant to me, it is the word of the living God. The word of God is proven, uh, the word of God cannot be changed, the word of God cannot be altered. And in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 11, he said, And God placed in the church apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, to do what? To train and equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So the purpose of the prophetic and the apostolic and the fivefold ministry is to train and equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Amen. Amen. Now the Bible tells me in the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 7, he says, Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. Now, some people say when the last apostle died, the last prophetic di prophets died, the prophetic ministry died. It was the end of the supernatural ministry. But you cannot change the word of God. If the Bible said in the last days false prophets will arise, it means there will be true prophetic voices. Amen. And like I said, and I will always say, you cannot counterfeit somebody that's something that is not real. You cannot counterfeit a hundred a 75 rent note because it doesn't exist. You have to have a 100 rent note to counterfeit it. So for a pro prophetic voice to counterfeit, there must be a true <coughs> prophetic voice. Tonight we get to pray that God will raise up true voices in the prophetic. <coughs> Surely the Sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing His plans to His servants, the prophets. Verse 8, He said, The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Sovereign Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When the Sovereign Lord has spoken, who can but prophesy? One of the true trademarks of a true prophet, they will never contradict the word of God. Yes, Lord. Amen. They will stick to the word of God. We all know, and I mean everybody knows Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4. They quote it. Where they say, the Bible tells us, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Amen. And I raised you up as a prophet to the nations before you were born. But the problem 
Beloveds, people don't want to be raised up. People don't want to be mentored. People don't want to be disciplined. They are loose cannons. Yes. They don't know the word of God. <coughs> they don't spend time in the word of God. But suddenly they become Major. the authentic voice. What they believe is they don't even serve in their own house. But they want to speak against the prophetic voice. Come on. True anointed voices. They said, no, you cannot worship the prophet. Nobody is worship prophets. But there's something that men of God of power carry. Yeah. Beloveds, and that's the anointing. Yes, Lord. And they don't Amen. desire the man. They desire what the man carries. Mm -hmm. And if you do not honor, because the Bible tells me, in Matthew chapter 13 from verse 57 and 58, he said, prophets are not honored in their own hometown, amongst their own family, and amongst their own people. And verse 58, the Bible tells me the reason is that Jesus could not do many miracles because of their unbelief. What you criticize, <clears throat> you cannot receive from. Amen. What you slander, you cannot receive from. Whatever you oppose. The problem today is, beloved, there are loose cannons and they become vagabonds. They don't want to be mentored. They don't want to be schooled in the house of the Lord. They don't want to be trained, but they want to be a voice. It is very important, beloved, that the child of God, the Bible tells me that it is very important that the child of God are trained in the prophetic. You know, a prophet, you are born a prophet, but you grow in your gifting and in your call. You begin to understand the prophetic after 20 years. Not after five years, two years, somebody prophesied over your life. Tomorrow, you are the major prophet. And you say the prophet is spoken and your life is totally messed up. Loose cannons. They don't submit in the house of the Lord. They do not uh, recognize God's authority in the house. They speak against the men of God. As if they are now the major voice in the city. That's why the Bible says. If you do not. When you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet. You will receive a prophet's reward. That is in Matthew. We read, read that scripture last night. So it is important to understand beloved. That. True prophetic voices. And God is going to raise up people. That will submit. To yes, the voice. Lord. And the word of God. Amen. Amen. Psalm 103. And I love the Psalms beloved. Psalm 103 verse 7. The Bible says. He made known. His ways to Moses. His deeds to the people of Israel. You cannot know the ways of God unless you desire to be in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Amen. As a child of God, a new born again believer, Moses said, at one time, I wish all of the people of Israel are prophets. Mm. He said, I wish that they all mm. should prophesy. Mm. Even Paul said that everyone should prophesy. He never Stop anyone of prophesying. But the prophetic call is sovereign. It is not yes. from men. It is from God. Amen. So when you speak against true prophetic voices. <clears throat> then what happened in your life beloved. You are bringing a barrier. For the blessings of God to manifest in your life. Amen. That's why I got so tired on Facebook when you hear. All these people come 
and that they accuse people of prophets through prophetic voices. When they minister and the word of God is released, they said, no, it cannot be God. Is God so dead that he can't minister to his prophets? Every time I read the word of God, every time I read the Bible, every time I go through the word of God, the word of God in the life of the prophets were higher than the word of any false prophet, yes, any Lord. diviner, any witch, any wizard, any sorcery. It, 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 it was raised about the word of the enemy. Even when Elijah the prophet faced the prophets of Baal, he challenged them. He yeah. said, come prophesy. Come, let fire come down from heaven. No fire came. He mocked them. He said, maybe your God is on a vacation. When the true prophetic voice arises, it will silence the voice of the devil. Amen. When true Amen. power arises, all the prophets in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, there was a manifestation of power. There was a manifestation of the glory of God. Yes. Surely, the Lord God does nothing but revealing himself to his servants, the prophets. He revealed himself to his children. He revealed himself to the church of the living God. Now, if the Bible tells me in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, is yesterday, today, forever be the same. It doesn't mean, beloved, that God doesn't speak, that he passed away through the prophetic voices, so he's not relevant anymore. No, the voice of the word of God is still relevant today. A sign of the true prophetic is the word of the Lord will be made manifest. Yes. They will minister the heart of God. One accusation was, no, but this man went through many scandals. David went through many scandals. But in Acts chapter 13, beloved, and I know those accusations were false, set up by the enemy, false pastors, false men that accused the brethren of God. Because the Bible said they will be like raven, ravenous wolves try to destroy the flock. The devil is still at work today. Yes. But if you study the word of God, you will find out that the true prophetic voice brings the presence of God. Amen. Brings the anointing of God. Yes, brings the Lord. power of God. Yes, hallelujah. Brings, brings people to repentance. And they will know that the Lord is God. Amen. Amen. The world doesn't even know that the Lord is God. Because of the silence of the prophetic in the house of God. It is so important that we need Amen. to understand, Amen. beloved, that Jesus is yesterday, today, forever be the same. Amen. He still want to reveal himself to his servants, the prophets. Now, in the book of Matthew chapter 11, from verse 11, the Bible tells me that since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, mm -hmm. and the violent take it by force. But the previous verse, I think it is verse 10, the Bible tells me there that, uh, you know, <clears throat> that in the old dispensation, there was no one greater than John, John yeah. the Baptist. Oh. But he said those who are in the kingdom will be greater than John. <clears throat> and if I study the word of God and I go to the book of Deuteronomy, the last chapter, the Bible will tells me that there was nobody that did the miracles like Moses. God used him in such a, 
extraordinary way, in such a powerful way, that the power of God was made manifest, the power of God was revealed in such a glorious manner, such a powerful way. He says in Deuteronomy chapter 34, <clears throat> Verse 10, since then no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. We live in a dispensation. Well, the Lord said, it wasn't somebody else that said, Peter that said it, or one of the disciples that said it. It was Jesus that said it. There will be no one greater. Those who are in the kingdom is greater is greater than John and all the previous prophets. Can I read it to you if you don't believe it? He said, verse 11, I tell you the truth, among those born of a woman, there's not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist yet. Yes, Lord. He who is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him. Now, if John is considered greater than all the other prophets, and I love Moses because of the supernatural dimension of the power, the opening of the Red Sea, the judgment of the ten plagues over the nations of Israel, the water that came out of the rock, supernatural manifestation. Now, the Bible tells me since then no prophet had risen in Israel like Moses whom the Lord knew face to face. It basically means that there's a prophetic generation. If this kingdom is greater than the previous kingdom, previous than John and all the previous prophetic voices that has risen over the centuries before 2,000 years ago, Greater than Moses, because they said, For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds Amen. that Moses did yes, in the sight Lord. of Israel. Yes. Then God yes. said, Listen, this generation, this kingdom that I plant upon the face of the earth will may yes. will manifest greater power and greater glory. Because the least in the kingdom is greater than them. Amen. You can either tell me I'm lying because this is what the Bible says. The trademark of true prophetic voices. So that's why I can't understand. If I come and I prophesy, you were born on this day, this 32nd, uh, it is too much. God cannot, only the devil can. Come on, be real. Amen. Why don't you go and serve that devil then? I serve a God that is able to reveal Amen. detail. Yeah. Yes. Doesn't Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 tells me the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. It has the ability to divide, to discern, to separate. Yes. Lord. So the word of God the sword of the Spirit, it comes from a living God. The Word doesn't come from men. Peter, Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Very important scripture. The Bible tells me that the Word is not for private interpretation. It is in verse 20 to 21. You cannot use the word of God for private interpretation. He says, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. So a true prophet will consider the word of God above everything. And because the true prophets consider the word of God above everything, the true prophetic will flow out of it. For prophecy never had its origin in the word of man, yes, Lord. but spoke 
from <clears throat> God as they were carried and moved along by the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes Lord. Move by the Holy Ghost. I pray today that the pro true prophetic voices will arise. Move by the Holy Ghost. Move by the Spirit of the living God. That the Word of God will become real. Hallelujah. If God could reveal to Apostle Paul, to Ananias on the Damascus Road, mm. he sent him to Apostle Paul and said, there's a man by the name of Saul. Go to this address in Damascus. I think in Afrikaans is Rechikstrat to a street called Straight. There you will find somebody is blind. You will lay hands. Perfect detail. Did God die when Paul, Apostle Paul died? No. He's still the revealer of your situation, of your destiny. He still has a plan and a purpose for your life. Oh, oh no, yes. but you can't give somebody's date and birthday. Why should we know this? The only reason God does it, beloved, is to so that you as a person will know that God knows everything about you. Amen. I don't know anything about you, Amen. but He knows everything about you. Amen. He knows about the secret sins. He yes. knows about the things that you desire. He knows your failures and your mistake. But He don't want to expose it. He wants to bring you into the kingdom. I remember a couple of years ago, we went to a place <clears throat> and after we ministered, Prophet Robbie, one of our prophets prophesied. And after we left this pastor, he said, no, don't go there. They only prophesy what you want to hear. Let me tell you, most of the time I've been in services, it is for restoration. But sometimes people will come into the house of God. They refuse to repent. They refuse to, to submit themselves unto God. Then God will expose them. Yes, Lord. But God doesn't want to expose your sin. He wants to reveal your future. So that you can step into your destiny. So that your future will be revealed. In 2 Kings. And this is. To me, very important, beloved, chapter 5. Everybody say 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings, chapter, Kings chapter, five. chapter 5. The word of the Lord came to Elisha the prophet. We remember Naaman. Hmm. And there was a servant, servant by the name of Gehazi. Hmm. And here this man came loaded. Loaded with all the gifts. I believe one of the main reasons. That the prophet. Elisha did not take. A part of the gift. Because there was a servant. Whose heart. Was of the things of this world. He served God. He served Elijah. Elisha the prophet. But his heart was still drawn to money, to the comfort of this world. Let me tell you, true prophets are persecuted. True prophets are rejected. True prophets will be told they are false prophets. True prophets will be mocked. But can I tell you something today, beloveds? That in the fact that you are mocked, that's the place that God is working your character. Yeah. If you're not being rejected, you can never grow in the grace of God. Because in your persecution, in your rejection, in the place that they slander you, falsely accuse you, that is there where God prepare you for another level of dimension of the power of God. Yes, Lord. Somebody spoke to me the other day. 
He said to me that some pastors came together and said, No, we will not send our people. He's not allowed to come to our churches because of the prophetic or maybe because of the explosive growth in the house or in the church. Now, I know I experienced when the enemy attacked through astral projection. I experienced when the devil tried to destroy and we pray. And I've been in places where we're busy praying and in houses where we pray that witches and wizards use astral projection. Yeah. We know what astral projection is. But can I tell you something? The Bible tells me in Second Kings chapter 5, But Elijah said to him, Was not my spirit with you when, you, when the man got down from his chariot to meet you? It is this time to take money or to accept clothes or olive groves, vineyards, flocks, herds, and men servants and men and maidens. He said, I was with you. My spirit went with you. In another translation, um, the new King James, he said, my heart went with you. Mm. Did not my spirit, it means when he said, did not my spirit, he said, when you took the money, I was there. I saw it. Yeah. Yes. Lord. Amen. I saw it. It happened. I saw what happened. But I was in my room, but I saw it. When some prophets come and they said the Lord took him into somebody's house and he can explain that you got a problem. It's here in the Bible. Why should a witch or a wizard come into your house and know everything? When he comes into your house, you must know he's there and you must expose that witch in the name of Jesus. Come on. Amen. I said you must expose that witch in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Can I take you to another scripture in the word of God? In the book of Ezekiel chapter 8, if you've got your Bible, open it and read it. Ezekiel chapter 8, from verse 3. He said, he stretched out his hand, what looked like a hand, and took me by the hair of my head. Now, if the Lord would come in here, I don't know if he would be able to take me by my, the hair of my head. Maybe he have to take me by my beard. The hand took me by the hair of my head. The Spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven. And in visions of God, he took me to Jerusalem. It means he was transported from one place to another. Yes. yes. And in visions of God, he took me to Jerusalem, to the entrance to the north gate of the inner court, where the idols that provoke to jealousy stood. He said, idols that provoke jealousy stood. And there before me was the glory of God of Israel, as in the vision I seen in the plain. He was took, transported from one place to another. So don't tell me it's a Judo spirit or witchcraft demon. If the devil is operating, you must be able to discern. The problem with the church is those who come up against the word of God, they're too lazy to pray. They're too lazy to fast. They pray 10 minutes. Hey. 10 minutes. Then they finish praying. They don't spend time in fasting for 40 days, 40 nights. That's why God can't move supernaturally in their lives. There must be a supernatural manifestation. I pray today that God will raise up true prophetic voices. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> will they be criticized? Yes. People criticize. People mock the prophetic. And said, no, this is of the devil. Can I give you another scripture in the book of 
Matthew, I think it's Matthew chapter 10. Jesus cast out the devil. And they said, Jesus, you are casting out devils through bills about. So they call the work of God the works of Satan. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Let read from verse 30. He who is not with me is against me, and who does not gather with me scatters. Then he said, And so I tell you, even sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Those who go out and criticize true men of God, I know they are false prophets operating. I know there are people that pretend to be prophets and they wizards and Satanists sent among the house of God and you cannot discern. I remember many years ago I went to a church. I went to a church and I begin to prophesy over people and one woman in the church Send a message to a friend and said, I don't believe in that prophecy. I said, you won't believe in the prophecy because a couple of years or months or years before that, a Satanist was there and he lay hands on and not one of you could discern it. How will you discern me? He laid hands on you. So don't talk to me. The main thing is, beloved, just because, and I tell you the reason why they didn't like it. Because I let somebody sing with no bondage on their head. Because you've got to have a head covering on. So you can't receive then somebody. <clears throat> and there was somebody in that house that day that was demon possessed. When I said devil come out. The thing manifested. It didn't never manifest when you were there. Because when there's a power encounter, demonic powers will be exposed. Amen. Where true prophetic voices arise, the word of God will be revealed. Amen. I said the word of God will be revealed. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 5, the Bible says, They have lied about the Lord and said, It is not He, neither will, he, will evil come upon us. Nor will we see sword or famine. And the prophets became wind. False prophets will always speak contrary to the word of God. Yes. For the word is not in them, thus shall it be done to them. Verse 14, and I love this word. It says, therefore thus says the Lord, God of hosts, because you speak this word, I will make my word in your mouth a fire. Yes, Lord. And the people would, and it shall devour you. Yes. Another Lord. translation said, it will consume it. It will Consume it. A true prophetic voice, a true prophetic word, fire will manifest. It will destroy demonic powers. Amos chapter 3, 7, this was my foundation scripture. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servant, the prophet. The lion is raw, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? I see there's a lot of criticism on Facebook. Then somebody will say, preach it. Let me tell you, when you place a comment, 
You do it because your life is an example. You're faithful in your own house. You're faithful in the house of God. You are willing to be disciplined. You are willing to submit to your leadership. You're willing to serve. Yeah, but God doesn't want to have slaves in the house. You don't fit anywhere. You don't do anything. You haven't started in ministry. Let me tell you today, beloveds, when you serve God, serve Him right. Amen. God cannot use people that are not willing to serve in His house. Come on. Amen. Come on. You're not willing to go through the ranks because now you consider yourself to be the next Catherine Kuhlman or whoever. Or the next Billy Graham. There are principles in the house of God. Let me just go to the last. In 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, beloveds. The Bible talks about Elijah is about to be taken away. About to go away and the word of the Lord came to all the sons of the prophets. Another translation said company of prophets. Um, the New King James say sons of the prophets. The NIV say company of prophets. The Old King James will tell me the school of prophets. Hmm. Now what does sonship mean? Sonship means you are trained by somebody where you submit and you become a son in the house. You're willing to be schooled. You're willing to be trained. You're willing to be disciplined. A school means a place of training. A place of equipping. A place of getting yourself ready. A company of prophets means there was a gathering of prophets where they meet together. They're always together. <clears throat> they are there for a <clears throat> common purpose. What purpose are you for in the house of God? Yes. Are you there just to be part of it and you long or does the house of the Lord doesn't mean anything? Is the presence, or do you believe I can sit at home and serve God from your house? You are ineffective. If you're not properly trained in the house of God, if you don't have a desire to know more of God, you will never be able to be trained in the fullness of of the things of God. Amen. Learn to be disciplined. Because David said in one of the Psalms. That a rebuke is like. Fresh oil upon my head. Amen. A, a rebuke is not bad. It brings you to a place. Where you will be able. To free experience a fresh touch. The trademark. Are true prophets. They come out of our house. They've been trained. They've been disciplined. They learn the ropes. They know what it is to submit. If you've never been in under submission. It's like somebody that once came... And uh, I don't know who made a prophet and said the prophet is spoken. A mm. couple of months later we had to cast out the devils because they were not willing to be disciplined, willing to be trained, willing to be coached in the things of God. Then they dare to say, 
Oh, I'm so intimidated by the gift. Oh, please. Oh, please. Beloved, we do not walk in fear, in intimidation. We walk in the love of God, in the anointing of God. <clears throat> when we submit to leadership, willing to be trained, willing to go through the school, the trademark of a prophet is the love for the presence of God. They place the word of God, not the pet doctrine, above everything. They only speak what God says. They walk in humility. They are uncomprom un uncompromising against sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. They come through the school of life, face ridicules, rejection, hardship. They love the place of prayer and purity and fasting. The true prophetic voice will never contradict the word of God. If the Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews, submit to your leaders, they will not walk in rebellion. Especially those who are upcoming. Their voice will be according to the word of God. I pray tonight, beloved, that you were blessed. I know it's a tough word. Some people will say, I mark them, no. I saw how the prophetic and how the man of God has been ridiculed, been uh, slandered, Call all kinds of names. That's why I want to raise up my voice against the demonic powers that want to silence the prophetic voice. I pray tonight by the power of the Almighty God that this message tonight, this word that I bring to you will bring clarity in your life. If you don't want to submit, it's fine with me. I don't have a problem. The only problem is you are playing with your own prophetic destiny. Tonight, by the power of the word of God, when people lose their love for God, the first thing that faith in their life, their love for the presence of God, their love for the word of God, their love for prayer, their love for the company of prophets. They lost it. Why? Because when your heart is far from God, you will not go after the presence of God. See God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your understanding. The Bible tells me there was nobody like Moses who saw God face to face. But Jesus said that you can see him more than that Moses saw him. The word of God is true. It cannot be changed. He said the least in the kingdom is greater than John. God has placed upon the church a great anointing We are moving in the double portion of the anointing. It means there's a combination of the Old Testament prophetic voices, apostolic voices, kingly anointing, pastoral anointing. There's a combination of the two dimensions of the anointing, the New Testament and the Old Testament that are coming together. One will chase a thousand, a thousand and two will chase ten thousand. There's an increase of the prophetic mandate upon the church of the living God. As sin become worse, 
the power of God is going to increase. I speak over your life. The lion roar. There's a, a roar of a lion that's coming forth today. Yes. Amen. God has spoken. Who can but <clears throat> prophesy? We are living in the greatest hour of the church. Jesus. I pray tonight that the true prophetic voice will arise. Every counterfeit spirit will be destroyed Jesus. in the mighty name of Jesus. I've been to churches, beloved, that people came in and they're supposed to be the prophetic voice of the church. Then I said, devil come out, bang, down. Because they did not operate in a true prophetic voice. In the past, in some places, I would go into a service, look at somebody, and I saw Satanism. I just saw Satanism, and I knew those people were involved in occultic activity. It is time that the true prophetic voice arise once again in the church. Because if the true prophetic voice arise, there will be no deception. Amen. You will place the ministry of the Word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit above everything, above your doctrine, above the tradition of man. And those who move in the true prophetic voice will not move in the fear of man. I want us to bow our heads in the word of prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and by the power of of his mighty Holy Spirit. I want us to pray a prayer. And this prayer. Is Lion of the tribe of Judah. Lion Lion of the tribe of Judah. Judah. As I begin to pray right now. As, as I begin to pray, pray right now. As I begin to pray right now. As I begin to pray right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every voice. Every voice that is contrary to the word of God. That is contrary to the word of God. Right now. Right now. Let your word become like fire in my mouth. Let your word become like fire in my mouth. And destroy every voice. And destroy every voice. That is not of my God. That is not of my God. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. As I pray right now, as I pray right now, let the true prophetic voices arise. Let the true prophetic voices arise. Let your people, let your, your people, see you face to face. See, see you face to face. face. Experience you face to face. Experience you face to face. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. 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 Any prayer requests? I'm going to pray for the sick. I'm going to pray for people that losing hope tonight, that losing their job. They lost their job and there is no hope. And uh, you're about to lose your house, your cars and everything because uh, of circumstances of the lockdown. I pray tonight by the fire and by the power of the Holy Spirit for a supernatural miracle. Amen. For a mighty breakthrough. Amen. Those who stand at the place of bankruptcy. Amen. I break the power of hell. I break the power Amen. of the devil over your life. Amen. Those who are about to lose their house and their cars. Father, I pray for supernatural intervention. Those who lost their business, I pray for supernatural helpers to intervene. Yes, Father, Lord. I ra pray right now that you will speak to their helpers, speak to their destiny helpers right now, that will mention their names, yes. that will mention their names in yes. the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. You that are about to lose your job, I pray for divine intervention. 
addiction in the mighty name of Jesus. They will not, if they lose their job, they will get a better job. Yes, but Lord. those who will not, those who lost their job will get a better job. Those who are about to lose their job, their bosses will uh, uh, change their minds in the name of Jesus. Yes. Their mind, their job, they will not lose yeah. it in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight the voice of the Lord will be heard on their behalf. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray for them tonight that go through marital crisis. Mm. Oh Lord, my God, intervene in a supernatural way. Reveal your power. Reveal your might. Reveal your presence. Amen. Show yourself mighty and strong on behalf of the church. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. As we begin to pray, for the restoration of true prophetic mantles to fall once again in the church, Father, I thank you for true, pure prophetic voices in this nation and across this world that are under attack, that you will preserve them by the power of your might. Yes, Lord. And every voice that is contrary to the <clears throat> word of God, let that voices be silent. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for every cancer. Mm. HIV AIDS. I don't know. I believe there's somebody. And I, and I will repent. You've got three days to live. And it's HIV AIDS. I break the power of hell over your life. Jesus. I break the power of sickness and disease over your life tonight in the name of Jesus. I speak healing. I speak restoration. Those whom, whom, whom the doctors have given hope. Up hope. And, and actually given up on them right now. Father, I pray for your supernatural mighty power to be revealed. Do tonight what no man can do. Yes, Raise the dead, cleanse the leper, heal the sick. <clears throat> In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to pray the prayer tonight that the apostles pray. In Acts chapter 4 verse 29. Acts chapter 4 verse 29. And I'm going to read it. I can quote it but I want to pray it exactly as the NIV stated it. Now Lord consider their threats and enable your servant. Yeah. To speak your word with great boldness. I pray for boldness to come upon the church. Yes, Lord. Amen. Stretch forth your hand to heal. Jesus. Amen. And perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Stretch forth your mighty hands. <clears throat> so that the name of your holy servant, Jesus, be glorified and be exalted. Amen. After they prayed, the place where they prayed was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let your church be filled anew with the Holy Ghost. They've been under threat, Lord. They've been accused. They've been threatened. The church has been closed down repeatedly by this government. My Lord. And after they prayed, the whole place was shaken. I pray for a shakening yes, in every house, in every church. Yes, amen. By the power of the might of God. Even in the God. And I love verse 33. With great power the apostles continue to testify to the resurrection 
of the Lord Jesus and much grace was upon them all. I pray right now that the church will testify with great power to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the grace of God will be made manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of yes, Jesus. Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. Thank you for the thank miracles. You, thank you for the heart that you touch. Thank you, Lord, for yeah. those that you place a prophetic mandate, a prophetic call upon their lives. They will not be intimidated. Yes, but they will serve in their house Amen. with humility Jesus. until the time and the season that you release them. There's a time and a season for activation and for release in the mighty name, name of Jesus. Jesus. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each and every one until Jesus comes. Surely the presence of the Lord is upon us. Surely we are in the year of recompense. Yes, Lord. My God will remember you. My God will recompense you. My God will anoint you. My God will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.